How's everybody doing? Dublin, right? So how many people have tried virtual reality here? All right, if you've only tried cardboard, hands down, otherwise, hands still up. OK, perfect. How many people have made VR content? Game, photos, videos, whatever. OK, perfect. So this is the right, this is the right crowd for me. So my name is Nick DiCarlo from Samsung Electronics America. And I'm going to talk about my experience in working in 360 video virtual reality uh, for the Gear VR for the last about 18 months. Um, and it's really from the perspective of consumers, content creators, and then industry. And by industry, I mean ad people as well as Samsung, Oculus, kind of VR companies. Of course, the big thing is that we've got a new product coming out very soon. $99 works with all of our 2015 flagships. This is really virtual reality for the mainstream, so the start of consumer virtual reality. And what that does is it allows us to work towards making this really a scale proposition. It's not just about for the VR enthusiasts that have been meeting about this space for two years or ordered an original DK1. Those are amazing, super critical people. I wouldn't be here without those people. But this is really about having it cross over and eventually get to smartphone scale. And so we thought a lot about how do we make virtual reality achieve smartphone scale. And so uh, when you think about that, um, of course, people think when they think about virtual reality, they think about games. And when I started uh, working on Gear VR, everyone said, what game are you going to make? What game are you going to make? What game are you going to make? I have no gaming heritage. Samsung doesn't really have any gaming heritage. It didn't feel like a great place to start. Cutting to the chase, video. Everybody watches video. I was actually shocked by this statistic. And this is the conservative statistic. Five hours per day between online video and television. Actually, some people say it's eight hours per day. I don't know how you fit that into your day. I, I'm, not, I'm not on this list. But we thought virtual reality video was going to be a big thing. And particularly, we're uh, focused on spherical video, so video that surrounds you in a sphere. The reason is very differentiated, very difficult uh, to make, but is a unique sort of storytelling proposition. And so video. So we're making the spherical video. We, consumers we know love video in the sort of very sort of uh, routine tech world of can I show it to my mom kind of thing, can I show it to my, grand, my grandfather, they get video, right? They may not get, get like first person shooter, but they get video. So video, everybody watches video, even hardcore gamers. Content creators, you need content creators to make the content, and if it's not interesting, they're not going to make it, right? So could we attract content creators to this, particularly since we need new cameras, new equipment, new everything. And then last is, is it even relevant for VR? A lot of people say, oh, VR video, that's not real VR. How do we make, how do we make this really something that the industry can care about? And particularly is monetizable and, and is something that uh, is worth paying for. So that's what I'm going to talk about, sort of my experiences here. Consumers, it's a kind of a hard product to sell, right? You've got to put a phone strapped to your face. Um, and we've got to give you stuff to do in it to overcome that friction of getting you to watch this. So there's the better phone against your face graphic. And it's not something that sort of sells itself on you're going to look so much cooler because you put this on, right? So we've got to, we've got to um, overcome that fact. But what we also know, and since a lot of you are in the VR world, is there's this ph phenomenon called VR demo face where somebody walks up sort of very reluctantly at an event like this, and they sit down very skeptically, and then they're like wowing as, they, as they're sitting in the swivel chair, spinning around in the middle of CES, Austin City Limits, South by Southwest. I'm you know, from Texas, so whatever Texas-based thing I can come up with, I'm going to highlight here. Uh, so VR demo face, and that's amazing, right? When, you, when you've got a product that's 12 months in, that we've been working on this for 12 months, people are that excited to still use, and still lining up, you know, you're, you're off to a good spot. So let's talk about why VR video is different for those who don't know. Of course, you watch television. It's a nice rectangle. I'm on a stage that essentially is oriented as a rectangle. The whole world is set from Shakespeare days, right, is, is set up like this. And it's great. And there's 100 years of history producing that. People have tried to make it more immersive by doing IMAX, right, make the screen bigger, 
wrap it around you. But what VR video is, is literally you're in the, in the circle. It's a pretty tough graphic to illustrate, because then I have to show a picture of a guy standing in that circle. But it literally takes over your whole world. And you look around, and everywhere you look, you're surrounded by that. And it's all powered by a phone, which is kind of the thing that blows everybody's mind of, there's not some big machine I'm hooked up to. It's just my phone making me feel like I'm in a different place. And so that's, that's really the magic of what we're doing here, is that you can make video that surrounds you completely and blows people's minds. The problem is it's really hard to make, right? Because you can't use a regular camera to do that. So I'm, I'm going to come to that. Now let's talk about how you fit virtual reality into your lives. This is probably the question I've been asked the most. How are you going to get somebody to buy this? How are you going to get somebody to buy this? And of course, I'm not a totally young person. I grew up watching television, turning the channel. And Sarah said, oh, we watch so much TV. There's no time to fit anything else into our lives. Well, that's not true. We fit a whole bunch of internet time into our lives, and we fit a whole bunch of app time into our lives. And all of this has largely occurred since I graduated college. So in my mind, that says that the world is ready to adopt new cool stuff that's very useful and very entertaining. And although there are still only 24 hours in a day and seven days in a week, there is time to fit virtual reality into people's lives. I don't know what prime time for virtual, virtual reality looks like, but I hope I'm going to figure it out here at some point. And we're in the early stages of VR, and this is the early stages of television, people crammed around the tiny little screen. But it's really about taking people on a journey. And it's not just about um, watching something, but it's about experiencing it and really being like walking down the street in Paris, down the street in Shanghai, and seeing something that you never could really see before. So, Cool content, people really love it, awesome. So let's talk about creators. First and foremost concern is, how are we gonna make this content? Is any filmmaker gonna make this stuff? How big of a check do we have to write? Like, we don't write big checks for this kind of stuff. Like, what, how, we, how is this gonna happen? The good news is, is about one year in, we've had more than 1,000 filmmakers register accounts on our filmmaker service. And we have probably a subset of the total. There's a massive number of people doing this, because there's an amazing YouTube, Hollywood, Bollywood, everywhere around the world, filmmaker ecosystem, and they're passionate about this type of new innovative storytelling. And if you think about sort of the classic image of the director, you know, this, this hand image, it's all about the rectangle, right? It's framing the shot and being really uh, special about it. The problem is, and then that translates naturally to the, tele to the screen, and then to the stage. The problem is, is that VR is an infinite screen. And so while I, as I get older, buy bigger and bigger televisions as my wallet uh, in, uh, allows me to do so, VR skips all that and lets you go to an infinite screen. In the early days of VR, there was another creator problem that we faced, which is if, if you're a guy like Chris Milk, let's take a great example, or Felix and Paul, two of the real pioneers in virtual reality filmmaking. They had to build their own app just for you to watch the video that they made. And that's not something that everybody can do or really should do. Let's let the filmmakers and creators uh, focus on the technical aspects of filmmaking and creating, which is why we created this service in the United States called Samsung Milk VR, which is a 360 degree video service that allows its premium placement. Your titles look great, everything looks great naturally navigating. We keep you up with all the latest technology. So as creators, they can, uh, keep, they can distribute their content easily, just as they would by putting it up on YouTube or signing a distribution deal for a movie theater, any of that stuff. And this will get better and better over time and more global over time. In addition, the camera, they need tools. Creators need tools. And probably still for the most part today, unless you're friends with uh, the guys from Jaunt, this is how you're filming virtual reality video. You're getting a 3D printed thing, you're sticking GoPros in it with six batteries, at least six SD cards, six chargers, trying to trigger it, trying to color balance it. It's hard, right? It's really hard. But that's not where it's gonna end up, luckily. So the industry is evolving very rapidly. There are professional grade cameras on the way. This is one example called Project Beyond. And what you see there is pairs of cameras. Those are like your eyes, pairs of eyes. There's eight pairs around the perimeter. 
and that's designed to make making a spherical video as easy as sticking a GoPro on a helmet and shooting. We're not there yet. During 2016, 2017, you'll see more of that. But virtual reality video is going to get even easier to make over time. And uh, so that is a key aspect. So once you overcome the technical issues of content distribution, content capture, now you get into really the key piece of it, the part that is the only part that really matters, is storytelling. And so when you think about, or when everybody, including myself, thinks about, OK, I got this cool 360 camera. I'm going to shoot some VR video. Let me go to a concert. Let me go to a sporting event. That's what everybody starts first as. And both of those are bad VR experiences. Because a stage fits in a TV screen perfectly, just like this one does. And so it never is as exciting as everybody thinks. If you're off to the side of the stage and you see the performer there, but the performer is presenting there, it's not as exciting. In addition, sorry that it's not a soccer uh, image here, as an American guy made this uh, image. This is another example of something that everybody uh, shoots for. I stick my project beyond in the middle, it's shooting out. The problem is, is the content is in the middle and the audience is on the outside looking in. Just the geometry of this is wrong. This is not, this is not the right format of stuff. Now, somebody is going to innovate this and figure out a way to do this really cool, but it's not the natural fit for virtual reality that everybody starts with. I started here too, so I'm not criticizing anybody who's done this, because probably you haven't tried if you haven't done this yet. So I don't know everything that works well in, v in VR video. That's why we're opening it up to as many people as we can. But this is what we think sort of works really well as a starting point. The first is tourism. Virtual reality is an experiential medium. I, can't, I don't have the time or the budget to travel everywhere in the world. It works for interiors. It works for exteriors. Uh, it's an amazing experience. News is sort of like purposeful tourism that you see stuff that's going on. Guys like Riot, R-Y-O-T, that are doing amazing immersive journalism, taking you to Syria, letting you experience really intense things in a way that just doesn't work on, on the 6 p.m. newscast. Then experiences. Maybe not throwing the, throwing the camera off of a mountain, but different kinds of experiences, being there kinds of things that you couldn't uh, do before. And then really the one that, I, that is my favorite and I found works amazing is fiction. And there's certain sort of natural uh, fiction uh, things that work really well. So the gangster hanging the uh, hero off the side of the, out the window in the movie, that's going to be pretty amazing and intense in virtual reality, right? And we've had some stories that do that as well. So it's an amazing fictional medium when you think about how do I incorporate the spatial nature of the person who's viewing the video into the story and really make it very organic. So we're not competing against 100 years of television and tens of billions of dollars in investment. We're doing something that's truly unique and different and is worth putting on goggles for. And so that speaks a little bit to the industry. And so when I think about virtual reality from an industry perspective, oh, I am way over, so I'm going to speed up. The content creators need to be able to monetize their content. We all recognize that. These are some of the most talented people out there in the world. And if you're watching The Martian on your TV, it's not as great as watching The Martian in virtual reality, because you actually are Matt Damon and on Mars. Gear VR is off to, off to a great start because we're actually asking people to pay for content, $9.99 a movie, right? Or $9.99 a game. And that's the model that we want to follow. We want this to be content that is worth paying for. Brands are also engaged in virtual reality and frankly contributing quite a bit to the monetization uh, that exists today while the platform is still small. But naturally, brands ask a, a question. How many views am I going to get? Am I going to get a million views or a billion views? And I think they've been brought up on the YouTube, Snapchat model of things, which is maybe 50% of the pixels for three seconds. And so what I would just ask you guys as people who are in this space and are way ahead of the curve is that you remind those brands that the person watched the video for four minutes. They had nothing else to distract them. There were no other pixels on the screen besides their video. And they took it off, and their mind was blown, and they handed it to their friend to watch as well. And so the value of that is vastly different than what a CPM costs today on a video basis. And we need to communicate that in these early days. 
So in summary, you guys are in an amazing place right now. VR is about to take off. It is uh, really a transformative medium. Mobile VR and VR video is just one of the many uh, places to work. I kind of think of it as you're at a really cool party that's about to get a lot better with super talented people like, uh, like that you're sitting with in this room. And uh, make sure that you communicate the value of what we're selling. So thank you very much.